These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. And are you all quizzed up today? Hopefully. You ready? Let's see. If you'd like to work out a question from the Eggheads while you watch at home, Steve, you've got one. The question is, which famous DJ once posed as a journalist for the Liverpool Echo in order to gain access to the arraignment of Lee Harvey Oswald? Oh, okay. I think I might know that. We will get the answer at the end of the show from Steve. Taking on our quiz champions today are the Aberystwythonians. Now, the majority of this team met while studying at Aberystwyth University. To complete the quintet, team captain Chris has called upon the brain power of the cleverest man he knows, his dad. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Chris and I'm a wedding supervisor. Hello, I'm Clive and I'm a managing director. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm a global operations specialist. Hi, I'm Andy and I'm a bartender. Hi, I'm Louis. I'm a web developer. So, Chris and team, hello. Hi, Hi Jeremy. Good to see you. And it's Aberyst with us. The key word here, isn't it, Chris? It is, yes. So, what do, what do we need to know about Aberyst with University? Uh, so, Aberyst with myself, Danny, Andy, and Louis. We all met there. We played in a football team together um, that I then went on to manage. Uh, my dad still lives in Lampeter, which is just down the road from Aberyst with. So, we're all connected by Aberyst with. Are you connected through quizzing as well? We have quiz before. Myself and Louis are famous for winning a packet of salt and vinegar crisps at a quiz once. Okay. Uh, but the first time we quizzed was last night before the show. We all went out together to a local bar and took part in a pub quiz. Uh, oh, really? Then did you win? We did win, yes. Ah, okay. Uh, were the eggheads represented there at all? Because that would be even more handy. Uh, no, they weren't, unfortunately. But you do sometimes <laughs> pop out, don't you, after a recording? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Nice. And quiz around the city of Glasgow. Yeah. Well, listen, good luck, Aberyst with Onions. You've given me a team name that I, I will definitely struggle with, which is a good start. And uh, I wish you well. Thank you very much. All the best. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challenges. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, as you know, the prize money rolls over to the next show. You've come at a very good moment, Aberyst with Onions, because the eggheads have won the last ten, so they're feeling a little bit cocky and a little bit cool. And you need to just drive them off the road here. Okay. okay? So they've won the last 10, that means there's 11,000 pounds for you to win. Nice. The first head-to-head -head battle is on sport. One of you, please, against either Chris, Steve, Barry, Pat, or Lisa. Okay, we are going to take Clive, and he is going to hopefully defeat Pat. Okay, Chris's dad, Clive, from the Aberyst Withonians, and he's taken on Pat from the Eggheads. To ensure there's no conferring, please go to our famous question room. Clive, I gather your interests are very much around sport. Yes. And what is that? Rugby and football? And cricket and golf and tennis. Okay. Would you like to go first or second against Pat? First, please, Jeremy. Good luck, Clive. Rafa Nadal's single success at the 2017 US Open Tennis Championships brought his total number of Grand Slam titles to what? Six. 16 or 26? I think that's going to be 16. You're absolutely right, 16. Pat, which football club sacked their manager Frank De Boer after only four matches of the 2017-18 season? Was it West Ham, Crystal Palace or Chelsea? Well, around about that time, uh, Slavin Bilic was at West Ham and Antonio Conte was at Chelsea. But I think Frank de Boer was brought into Crystal Palace and there was a bit of a conflict between the style of football he wanted to play and the style they were able to play. And uh, as so often the way, out he went. So I think it's Crystal Palace. Yeah, Crystal Palace. OK, here's your question, Clive. Which cricketer who announced his retirement in 2017 won two county championships with Nottinghamshire and three with Yorkshire? Is it Stuart Broad, Matthew Hoggard or Ryan Sidebottom? No, that's Ryan Sidebottom. It is. Well done, Ryan Sidebottom. You know your sport. Pat, what was the name of the prize fighter and former slave who fought the champion Tom Cribb in famous contests in 1810 and 1811? Tom Molyneux, 
Olauda Equiano or Randolph Turpin? Well, the years, I think, rule Randolph Turpin out easily, so he's gone. Olauda Equiano is certainly a prominent figure from North American history and slavery. I'm not sure he was a prize fighter, though. Hmm. I think I'll go for Tom Molyneux. Do you know this one, Clive? I suspect the same. Tom Molyneux is the right answer. 2-2. Two, two. We go to your third question now, Clive. In 2015, who became the first British motorcycling Grand Prix world champion since Barry Sheen? Scott Redding, Danny Kent or Cal Crutchlow? Pretty much choice of two. I don't think it's Cal Crutchlow. Go for Danny Kent. Danny Kent is the right answer. Well played. You're good. So Pat's up against it now. Pat, to stay in. Which team defeated Hull Kingston Rovers in Golden Point Extra Time in Rugby League's 2016 million pound game? Was it Witness, Featherstone Rovers or Salford? Hmm. Not certain of this. I think I can remember Salford competing in the 2017 million pound game. I'm in trouble here. I've got a good memory of Salford playing Hawkins and Roberts, and yet have a strong feeling that it's it's further back in time. But if that's not true, then I'm sort of down to a one in three. So, um, on unsatisfactory state of affairs, I think I'll have to go for Salford. Yeah, your memory is never really plays you wrong. You're absolutely right. Salford it is. I think you just got tagged on the wrong ear there. I think it's a year problem, yeah. All right, 3-3. Three, three. Good start for our challengers. It goes to sudden death now, Clive. I don't give you alternatives. In which US sport did Colin Kaepernick start a political protest movement by not standing for the national anthem before matches? American football. American football's right. Pat, the Memorial Coliseum that opened in 1923 is a sporting venue in which US city? The Memorial Coliseum. I had a faint thought it sounded a bit like Los Angeles, but I'm not at all sure. It's a vast country, so there's loads of enormous stadiums scattered all over. The Memorial Coliseum. I'm in trouble here. I think I'll go for Los Angeles. And Los Angeles is right. The quizzing. Okay, Clive, your question. In 2017, Barcelona made an offer of £119 million for which Liverpool football club player? Philip Coutinho. It was Philip Coutinho, yes. Pat, your question. At the 2017 World Athletics Championships, Great Britain won gold in the 4x100 meters men's relay final with a team that included Nathaniel Mitchell-Blake, Danny Talbot, CJ Uja, and which other sprinter? I'm not at all confident with this, but he's certainly he's one of the more prominent ones in recent years. Adam Gemelli. Adam Jamili is right. Oh, Clive. How do you get rid of him? His keep going is the answer. Which English horse racing venue is located on Whitehawk Hill? York. York, no. Clive, Brighton Racecourse. So Pat has a chance to get his place in the final. In which sport, Pat, did Michael Banalek win the amateur championship on five occasions? That surname rings a bell for things like the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St Andrews. I think he might be now an, a key administrative figure in the British Open, so I think I'll go for golf. Later Secretary of the RNA, knighted for his services to golf. You're right, Pat. Well done, but great quizzing by our challenger. Oh, my goodness me. Is it going to be like this all, all the way through this afternoon, eh, kids? I bet you're quaking. Pat, you're in the final. Clive, you've been knocked out. Return to us, please, and we'll play on. So as it stands, the Aberyst Withonians have lost a brain from the final round. The egg are all still there. We play on with food and drink. What's she going to do? What are we thinking, Danny? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be Danny. Going to be Dan. Okay, against which egg kit? We're going to take on Steve, please. All right. Have you done food and drink, Steve, much? Not for a long time. No. Huh? 
Dan from Aberyst with Onions versus Steve from the Eggheads, please take your positions. Okay, food and drink, Dan. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'll go first, please. Here we go with your first question. What name is given to pastry that is rolled, folded, and re-rolled to create leaves of pastry that rise in the oven? Is it funky, flaky, or frisky? Flaky. Flaky's right. Steve, which of these dishes is a type of omelette? Frittata, fricassee, or fritto misto? I think that must be a frittata, Jeremy. It is. You had one recently? Uh, now I don't think I have, to be fair. Uh, back to you, Dan. A clouty dumpling is a type of what? Clouty is C-L-O-O-T-I-E. Suet pudding, sponge cake, or scone? I'll go with scone. It's a suet pudding. Ah. Okay, Steve. What are battered and fried to make the tapas dish called chopitos? Baby carrots, baby squid, or baby snails? Can you spell that, please, Jeremy? Yeah, C H O P I T O S. Yeah, can't say it's very of him. Chopitos. Uh, fried and battered. Fried and battered carrots don't sound very clever. Um, snails may be more French. I think I'm heading towards squid, but I really don't know. But I'll say baby squid. Baby squid is correct. Okay, 2-1 to our egg hit. And that means you need to get this one right. Which red wine grape goes with Grenache and Syrah in the wine blend known by the abbreviation GSM? Is it Montepulciano? Merlot or more verdre? I love, I'm not good on wines. Um, I go Montepulciano. Let's see whether Steve knows this. I don't know, but because of the two are French, I'd have probably gone Merlot. Yes, I see what you mean. So you go for the French one of the three. But I've really no idea. Grenache and Syrah. If Dan's right, I won't be surprised. What about the other side? We thought more verdure. Well, I thought more verdure, so <laughs> we've got all the bases Yeah, we've got it really covered here. Uh, well done, you're right, Chris, actually. More verdure is the answer. So you've been knocked out down by Steve, beaten by our egghead, and as a result, not in the final. We're only two rounds through. Come back to us. We'll see what happens next. So as it stands, the Aberyst with Onions have lost two brains from the final round. The eggheads have not lost any so far. Let's change this now. Yeah. So we've got science. Right, which one of you two... You know, which one, confident about science. So which one of you two are less rubbish at it? Probably. Maybe. I mm -hmm. think I'd, I'd rather I go up and you want to he gets a better chance on a different subject rather than... Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, Andy is going to Andy, go up. Andy, a bartender, okay, against which egghead? So you've got a choice of Chris, Barry, Lisa. Uh, we'll have Chris, please. Known as the steam train. Steam roller. Steam. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting Chris's name wrong. Andy from the Aberyst with Onions versus the Steamroller from the Eggheads. Please take your positions. So your dad was on Eggheads, Andy. He was back in 2011. So, okay, that's series 11, and he was playing against who? I know they knocked Chris out, so hopefully I'm... I'm looking to carry on that trend. So, um, you're a quizzing family, Andy, are you? Yeah, yeah, well, um, my dad's big into his pub quizzes as well. Uh, I quiz with Chris and uh, Dan of a weekend. Uh, hopefully, carry on that trend. OK, good stuff. Science, Andy, would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go second, please. OK, first question, Chris, to you. The term brachial refers to which parts of the body? B-R-A-C-H-I-A-L, brachial. Arms, ears, or kneecaps? Well, you've got brachial arteries in your arms. It's arms. Yeah, it's arms. Well done. OK, over to you, Andy. In which year did digital audio broadcasting, or DAB radio, begin in the UK? 1975, 1985, or 1995? I will go with 1995. Yes, the most recent one. Well done. 95. Chris, science. The element antimony has what chemical symbol? K, S, B, or P, B? That's S, B, Jeremy. Yes. So K is what? 
potassium. PB is lead. Lead. Yeah. SB is antimony. Now back we go to our challenger. Nephrology, Andy, is the branch of medicine concerned with the study of the functions of which organs? Nephrology. Kidneys, lungs, or eyes? Uh, could you spell that for me, Jeremy? N-E-P-H-R-O-L-O-G-Y. I'd like to go with the eyes, please, Jeremy. There's not the eyes. I wonder what that would be. The eyes. Ophthalmology. Ophthalmology, yes. This is kidneys. So Chris has a chance to take the round. The compound C2H4O2 is which type of acid? Sulfuric, acetic, or nitric? Well, sulfuric is H2SO4, nitric is HN3, so it's got to be acetic. Vinegar, in other words. Acetic acid is the right answer, Chris. Three out of three. Quick round, Andy. Sorry, knocked out by our egghead. Okay. No worries. You have to knock one of our family out anyway. Yeah, yeah, he's right. We, your dad will be um, mentioning this next time you meet, no doubt. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Come back to us, Andy and Chris. Rejoin your teams. One more round to play before the final. Well, Chris, we had some formulas there. We had a nitric acid, was it? Yeah. You said. Oh, you sound a bit cross now. You said HN3. It's HNO3. Yeah, I'm just going to mention that. There's an O in there. HN3 is something, though. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's not cyanide, isn't it? It's hydrozoic acid. Oh. And that will come up one day. We didn't cover that in our little chemistry. Okay. As it stands, the Aberyst withonians have lost three brains from the final round. The eggheads have not lost any so far. This could be the moment for the comeback. And it's politics. <laughs> Who would like this? Uh, Louis is our, was assigned politics to revise, and we learned on the train up yesterday that he knows nothing about politics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what happened, Louis? Well, American politics I'm fine with. <laughs> okay. So our web developer, Louis, against, and you can have Barry or Lisa. Just go with Lisa. We're going with Lisa. Okay, very good. So Louis from Aberyst with Onions, and uh, Lisa from the Eggheads. Please, for the last time, go to our question room. I gather you are a uh, self-proclaimed computer geek, Louis. I'm afraid so, yeah. Meaning that you spend your time working on computers professionally? Yes, I do. I'm a web developer, so I get to make nice pretty websites for people. Right. And it, very creative, that, I should think. Yeah. I, well, we have designers do all the aesthetics for us, but there's a bit of trying to make it match their design. So we have to play with a lot of fonts. Right. OK. And you also have a remote-controlled dog? A canine, yes. Dog too. Yeah. What does it do? <laughs> It just runs around the room playing ACDC, basically. Okay. And a 3D printer? A few. A few? <laughs> yeah. Bit of a fiction. So, but I, I did see a 3D printer working just at my daughter's school the other day. It's actually amazing what it was doing. The precision, Louis, is incredible. It's amazing, yeah. Hypnotic. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, would you like to go first or second on politics? I'd like to go second, please. So, Lisa goes first. Here we go. What was the profession of Brigitte Macron before retiring to assist with her husband's political career? Was she firefighter, teacher or journalist? I think she was, in fact, her husband's teacher. So we'll go with teacher. Yes, teacher's right. And we go to you, Louis. Who was appointed Chancellor of the Exchequer in July 2016? Ed Davey, Philip Hammond or John McDonnell? That'd be Philip Hammond. Philip Hammond is right. Lisa, in which year did the National Assembly for Wales first sit? 1979, 1989 or 1999? And you assume it's post-devolution, she says. Unless I've got that really hideously wrong. Which would suggest 1999. 1999 is correct. Louis, your question. Andy Burnham became the first directly elected mayor of which city in May 2017? Manchester, Glasgow or Bristol? Rings a bell. I can only assume Glasgow's had one for a while. I haven't heard anything about Bristol in the news for a while. So, I'm going to have to go for Manchester, please. Challengers, is he right? Yeah. You are right. Well done, Louis. Manchester. Levels. Tight again after two questions. Let's see whether this time the challengers can get past the egghead. 
Your third question, Lisa. In 2017, Michael Flynn set a record in the United States by being forced to resign after only 24 days in which position? FBI director, press secretary, or national security advisor? Michael Flynn. Yes, of course, the difficulty is all of these positions have undergone replacements, some of them in fairly quick succession. I think Michael Flynn is the one bound up with um, some of the issues that are going on between the US and Russia, which I think would lead me to National Security Advisor. Yeah, you're right. See, the confusion, I suppose, is there was an FBI director, James Comey, wasn't there, who went, and then there was a press secretary, Scaramucci. I think uh, Comey's guy. replacement is also called Michael, which is making things even worse. But you're right, this, this was the National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn, and it was all Russia-related. All right, again, three out of three, Louis. So annoying. Just get this one right, we go to sudden death. Which of these politicians had a son who served as Home Secretary in a Conservative government between 1954 and 1957? James Keir Hardy, David Lloyd George, or Ramsay MacDonald? I've only heard of two of these, so that's not a good start. I suspect I'd have heard of more than one Lloyd George. So I'm going to have to go for Ramsay MacDonald. Now, let's think here. So, um, challenges, do we know? I thought it was David Lloyd George, but I'm not because sure. Because the son means. was who? I'm not sure. I just think I've heard that somewhere. But Politician who had a son, eggheads? I fancied David Lloyd George as well. Who was the son? I don't know. The answer is David Lloyd George. The son was Gwilym Lloyd George, but, you know, 50s, half a century ago or more. <laughs> Sorry, Louis. I, what can I say? Uh, you've been beaten by our egghead. You won't be in the final. If you come back to us, we'll see the lineup for the finals and we'll play it for £11,000. And this is what we've been playing towards. It's time for our final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads are not in this round. So, Clive, Dan, Andy and Louis from Aberyst with Onions, would you please now leave the studio? Chris, you quiz yourself? Uh, I do, yes. I play in three quiz leagues. So I compete in the Wirral Quiz League for Aardvarks, in the Bolton Quiz League for Top Ball Outers, and the Pendle League for Beer House. Oh, all right, good. Well, and it's brilliant to have you. And you're now playing to win the Aberyst with Onions £11,000. Chris, Steve, Barry, Pat, Lisa, you're playing for something that money can't buy, which is your own reputation, and to keep this run going. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time, they're all general knowledge. You can confirm. Sorry, that doesn't help you, Chris. Yes. Put your teammates <laughs> at the back there. But the question now really is whether Chris's one brain can defeat these five over here. Sure, it can happen, Chris. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first. OK, here we go. The French term La Rive Gauche now usually refers to the south side or left bank of which river? Seine, Loire, or Rhone? My, my instinct is saying Seine, so I will go with the Seine. That's right, the Seine, in Paris. OK. Eggheads, your question. Which James Bond film was released in 2008? Skyfall, Spectre, or Quantum of Solace? Mm. Oh, gosh. No, Spectre's later and Skyfall's later too. Yeah. Skyfall's like 2012 and Spectre's oh, later. That's that is not the Quantum of Solace. That really second one went to. Yeah. It was, yeah. Skyfall's 2012 and Spectre's yeah. on the side of that and Quantum of Solace is before, so I think you yeah. can go Quantum yeah. of Solace. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Mm-hmm. Well, we're pretty sure on this one. We're going to go for uh, Quantum of Solace. Quantum of Solace is right. Well done, ladies. Challenger, your question. Which race course is also known as Town Moor? York, Doncaster, or Chester? Wish my dad was here. <laughs> uh, Town Moor. Again, I'm going on instinct here. I'm not sure. I think it's Chester, but it's more of a guess than the last one. So, Chester. Got another race course coming up here. This is. I don't know. Clive, do you know this? I think it's Doncaster. Doncaster is the answer. Okay, Doncaster is the answer, which gives the eggheads a way through here. The historic royal forest of which wood covered parts of which of these areas of England? Peak District, Oxfordshire or Cornwall? Ah, 
Ascot under Witchwood. That's the signal box at the end of the single line section from Wolvercott on the way to Worcester. So, um, yeah, it's a signal... Well, I don't know if it's still there or not, but it was a signal box on the Oxford, Worcester and Wolverhampton Railway that I used to, I used to work on, actually. And, uh, yes, yeah, Ascot under Witchwood. An Oxford mm-hmm. joke. Okay, well, I'm happy with that. Well, Sounds I'm convincing. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Well, after a convincing speech by a railway correspondent, we're going to go for Oxfordshire. Oxfordshire is the right answer. Well done. Okay. It's not an emergency, but it is a crisis. You need to get this one right to stay in. Which of these Soviet servicemen is said to have averted nuclear war in 1983 by ignoring false computer readouts of US missiles heading towards Russia? Now, is this Stanislav Petrov? Alexei Leonov or Vasily Shukov? I'm sure recently I've watched a program on this and I'm still not sure, but the one that rings a bell somewhere is Alexei Leonov, so I will go with Alexei Leonov. Alexei Leonov is your answer. Now, I, found that I came across this recently because this guy died and I shared it on my Facebook page, but even so, these are all Russian looking names is let's just start against to see whether we can eliminate is Vasily Chukov someone you know I think he's a, a Russian general of the first second right. world war Alexei Leonov walked in space he walked in space oh, no, I know him. cosmonaut the answer is Stanislav Petrov Chris I'm so sorry you've been beaten in the final by the eggheads we have to say congratulations eggheads you have won Bad luck. And he, until his death, when all the obituaries were then launched, we probably remember them. Yeah. Stanislav Petrov was, was somebody we'd almost forgotten about. Then we suddenly realised, oh, he saved the world. There we are. I know you're a brilliant quiz. I know the team are. We've had yeah. a number like this recently. They didn't get a question wrong. And no. No problem with losing when they don't get a question no. wrong. You just can't beat them. Well, they, really it's, well it's good to see them in, in top form as they are at the moment. Although they would modestly deny, of course, being in top form, wouldn't you, Eggheads? No, you wouldn't. Okay, the Eggheads have done what comes naturally to them. Their winning streak continues and they're becoming insufferably confident. I'm afraid it means the challengers don't go home with the £11,000, so we're going to roll that money over to our next show. Eggheads, I'm actually wondering if you could ever be beaten by anyone. Steve, you had that question, an interesting Mm -hmm. question about Lee Harvey Oswald. Yes. The question was, Jeremy, which famous DJ, who was posing at the time as a journalist for the Liverpool Echo, um, attended the arraignment of Lee Harvey Oswald? All right. I think I know, but you te- uh, obviously that's a person of a particular generation. Yeah. Somebody who's not with us anymore, actually. And I think the clue probably there is, if you don't know, the Liverpool Echo. Right. And it's John Peel, who'd worked in the USA for a time and actually met JFK on the campaign trail. When he heard about the assassination, he was determined to get across and be at the arraignment. So um, like he posed as this uh, journalist and he took them all in basically by his accent. And he got to be there, and this photo is existing to this day where John Peel is actually in the room where uh, Leo Verbal's been interviewed. Amazing. Thank you, Steve. Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads. There will be 12,000 to play for. Until then, goodbye.